Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. All right, grade nine, so we have visited forces as the new topic. We've looked at contact forces throughout last week. Um, last week's uh, little session, friction, tension, as well as compression. Tension, so two people pulling a rope, for example. Uh, friction, tires uh, on the road. You see, often see tire marks there. You can see that's a result of some frictional force. And uh, we've also looked at some compression. So like compression, squeezing a stress ball. What I'm squeezing right now. Mm, awesome. We also looked at a couple of things though, that their forces do consist of push or pull. Okay, so the pulling of a rope, uh, the pushing down on a uh, stress ball, that's a push force. You know, you're technically you're pushing down on something just with your fingers. It's just that it's given the name press, but press is also a push. Uh, we know force is also measured in Newtons, all right, which is denoted by the symbol capital N. And uh, we are also now moving on to another force called magnetic force, okay, between the two magnets, okay, if we were struggling to figure out where that word came from, okay. So we see that we've got um, magnets and we often play around with magnets. We obviously first probably saw magnets on our mother or on our mother's fridge or refrigerator, refrigerator magnets, okay. A second field force, all right, is uh, we looked at the first field force last week, which was gravitational force. Now we're looking at a the second one, which is a magnetic force, and this takes place between two objects, okay, that are uh, not touching. It's a non-contact force, okay. So magnetic force is also another non-contact force, and a magnet can either push or pull. Okay, a magnetic object without touching it. We know that. They know the object will eventually, if it is magnetic, will touch the magnet eventually. But that initial pull or push is, of course, a non-contact. The magnet will not make contact with it initially. Okay, so let's write that down. A magnet can push or pull. Hmm. a magnetic object so it can't pull a ma object that's not magnetic okay so more often than not if it's not a metal it probably will not be magnetic make that J a little bit better there you go Okay, some, some uh, uh, objects in real life that make use of uh, magnets, uh, some doors, all right, require some magnets, all right, um, there's some doors that if you push, you don't press a button, then the magnet releases, and then you're able to push the door open, so in, uh, believe it or not, um, in bank, bank doors, there's some magnetism there, because there's metal, um, the door will slam close in a bit of a magnet. Uh, makes use of some magnetism there and of course you get the magnets you could buy a crazy store that you throw up and they make that nice little noise okay um, even those things are used as a tool all right you go to any computer store to avoid um, um, people taking off some gadgets computer gadgets they are locked by a magnet and only another magnet can of course unlock it um, that's pretty interesting magnets that are used in real life if you go to computer mania and credible connection and all those tech stores which is like my favorite stores um, on the planet because I uh, love computers and I'm a tech geek and all that kind of stuff at the same time as I'm a physics tutor <clears throat> cool now the question may be on everyone's mind why can a magnet push or pull a object magnetic object without touching it why can it do that how is that even possible all right this is because a magnet has something that's called a magnetic field around it okay a magnet has a magnetic field around it and we are going to uh, I'm tempted to draw a beautiful 
join of uh, magnetic field. Okay, so it's got a magnetic field around it. Now, when the object is in the field, it will experience magnetic force. That force might be a force of repulsion or force of attraction. Uh, attraction meaning it'll come towards the magnet, repulsion, it'll be it'll go away or pushed away. And often it may not look like it will be pushed away in terms of it may change position, but it won't be attracted. It might just be keeping like someone you're pushing someone like to not come close to you. Almost. So we've got to add that into our little notes here that when an object is inside or in the magnetic field it will experience a magnetic force all right sweet now, magnetic force is strongest near a magnet and becomes weakest uh, or weaker further away. So we add that in here, strongest uh, near the magnet. Okay, and intuitively it's weaker when it is further away. <coughs> cool. Magnets will only attract magnetic substances such as iron, steel, and nickel. So we're going to list a few magnetic uh, substances quickly. And most of those, of course, we just heard uh, in that list are obviously metals. Okay. So magnetic materials, I'm going to label them. Okay. Uh, one most common one is iron. Okay. Iron, super magnetic, mate. Okay. Second one, uh, steel which obviously got iron in it, and made up of other different uh, metal substances as well. And of course, the third one there being nickel, which is also a metal. Okay. Um, so sometimes nickel is often referred to coins. If I had a nickel, you know, in my pocket, or if, um, give me a nickel, you know, give me a coin, you know. <clears throat> I think that's what they call it in America. But coins are also magnetic as well. Okay, uh, something that is um, non-magnetic. Okay, so we've got magnetic materials, and we've got some non-magnetic materials. Now, you can, if you have a magnet at home, or like those little play magnets or whatever, a magnet nonetheless, okay, um, non-magnetic substances would include such a, um, materials such as aluminium. Now, aluminium, we know, is also a metal. Okay, aluminium. Uh, number two would be brass. Okay, also metal. Three, also metal. Copper. Okay, uh, co copper might not be magnetic, but it's a very good conductor of electricity. And then uh, number four, of course, uh, this makes most sense. Wood. Okay, wood cannot conduct electricity, but wood is also uh, non-magnetic. And of course, uh, the final one here, the fifth one, plastic. Okay, these are all non-magnetic materials or substances. They will not be magnetized. They will not be attracted to the magnet at all. Absolutely nothing will happen. All right, absolutely nothing. Okay, it'll just like watch the magnet and laugh. All right. Ha 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 ha. All right, so uh, all magnets actually have two poles. All magnets have two poles. This is a north pole and a south pole, okay? And um, to basically explain the attraction, opposite poles do attract, okay? North to, uh, to south or um, south to north. Whichever way you want to look at it, there will only be a force of, of attraction between north and to south or south to north poles there will still be a force for uh, with um between north to north and south to south but the magnets will literally push away from each other they will repel all right literally i obviously being a um keen or playful child back in my 
days when I first dis discovered and I wanted to test this theory about repulsion, I would take two North Poles and just try and push them close, close together as possible, but you can literally feel the force in the magnet pushing it away. Sometimes, of course, with constant pressure, that force can be overcome, and if it is overcome, that force of repulsion, then guess what? The magnet will break. The magnetic field will disappear, and you'll not be able to get it back again. Okay, so on top here, we obviously we've got the force of attraction. In other words, the magnets will eventually be attracted to each other and they will eventually touch. Our force of repulsion looks, of course, is when this pole is the same as this pole. So the north pole, this north pole here was this side. Then of course the forces will push, the, all the magnets will push away from each other and the force will be a force of repulsion going in the opposite directions. Okay, that's basically magnetism in a nutshell. Okay, or when actually magnetic bars. Okay, but um, to move on or to take this a little bit further, of course we, we must know and we must understand that um, the earth itself Okay, I'm just going to explain this quickly before I draw it, is that the Earth has a magnetic field, which has been plotted, all right, accurately by scientists, okay, uh, because, um, and of course the gravitational force, we sometimes like to think of it like a magnetic field or like a magnetic force, because everything is attracted to the Earth's surface, everything, unless you are a bird, you are gifted with the ability to overcome that, okay, but um, even a bird, must land as well okay that's gravity you climb a building there's still gravity so you're still on the building it's not all of a sudden that you climb on a building now you like totally um escape gravity you know gravity is still keeping you to surfaces or things on the earth all right pretty kiff uh, its pattern is like a giant bar magnet, like we see there. Then we see bar magnets drawn there, but its pattern is kind of like a giant bar magnet where they are in different places to the true North Pole or true South Pole. So true North and true South, are, um, if we look at a compass, we know we got North. North would obviously face up, South down, and East and West. But then you get something called true north and true south. True north and true south are slightly off from where we, our compass would read north and south. And that's um, to go deeper into that is in the subject of geography when you get to grade 10, 11, and 12. They'll divulge more about why that is the case. We're not going to redo that now. You're just interested in the science part of it. Because when you get to physics next year, if you choose physics, we'll not talk about true north at all in the subject. If you do life science next year, grade 10, 11, and 12, they will also not talk about True North. It will be most often spoken about or taught in geography, especially when you get to map work as well. Okay. Um, which I mentioned now, again, they are geographic axis of the Earth. And I'm going to draw it just to show you how the magnetic field looks slightly. And... Um, a compass though, uh, just to, I will say this though, is that you get true north and you get true south, but the compass will always point to magnetic north. So when you look for north using a compass, you're actually not looking at true north, you're looking at magnetic north, because a compass makes use of a magnet as well. You're looking at magnetic north, all right, or the magnetic north pole, because that is where the Earth's magnetism is concentrated. Okay, so because that's how our compass basically operates and works, all right, with Earth's magnetic field as well. Let me just draw how that looks. Basically, the Earth's magnetic field, and um, obviously I've drawn true north there. I've drawn magnetic north coming straight down, which is the same direction your compass will point to. And then true north and true south at the opposite directions there. But you see it's just slightly to the left of magnetic north, all right, slightly off, okay? That's a geographic, on the geographic axis. Okay, and we see the magnetic field. So the arrows they indicate the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, of course we've drawn we've drawn Earth in two D of co of course, uh, but because we know the shape of Earth is not a circle, Earth is geoid. Okay, it's a geoid shape. Okay, 
and um, you see the magnetic field in the middle going around magnetic magnetic field coming in from the true north or magnetic north uh, side and moving outwards at the southern side of the earth and obviously in the middle um, circulating on the one half and on the other half um, as well like I said a compass needle will always point in the magnetic north pole it will always point there because that's where the earth's magnetism is concentrated in magnetic north but true north slightly off okay just slightly off to the left there with the other dotted line going a little bit at an angle okay and that's where we're going to leave things on magnetism for this week um grade nines uh when we come back next week, we're going to have a look at electrostatics right or the electrostatic force and um that's that is a topic that stays all the way through till uh, matric electrostatics and uh, magnetism somewhat fades away um a little bit but electrostatics stays uh, all the way to matrix so we're going to focus next week's session entirely on electrostatic and electrostatic force